Hello to all of you. Today I want to design a generator based on a simple experiment. Look, I have a coil that has 200 turns. And I have connected it directly to this middle zero galvanometer. If you pay attention, in most generators, the driver of the permanent magnet or the coil that creates the magnetism is moved at the edge of the coils. If I want to implement the usual method, I use these two neodymium magnets placed on this plate and move it on the outer edge of the coil. You can see that the galvanometer has little movement. You can see an example of these generators in these pictures. Now let's come up with a better method and if you look carefully, the inside of the coil core is extremely important. If you have a cylindrical magnet with N pole on one side and S pole on the other side, and pass it through the coil like this, you can see how interesting this movement is that it can move the galvanometer needle to such an extent and this is wonderful. Of course, here the inner opening of the coil is wide, and if the opening was narrower, more energy would be produced. The generators that are made in this way are called linear generators, which have their own advantages. We return again to the situation where the two magnets are placed on the screen and again compare the amount of electricity produced. You can see that it works much weaker than the linear method. Therefore, more than this value, no voltage is produced, and we are wasting energy by using this method. So far the linear method has produced much better voltages. But we want to implement another method. In this method, I use a small neodymium magnet cylinder. Now I rotate it like this next to the center of the core, you can see that this method produces a good voltage. In fact, the magnet should be in the center of the coil, and if it was in the center of the coil, it would have much better power. This method is easily applicable in the center of the coil and increasing the number of turns of the coil can increase the voltage. Now I connect the two ends of the coil to a battery with DC current. Now the coil has become a magnet, one end of which is the N pole and the other side is the S pole, and you can see that the cylindrical magnet is placed in the right direction in the field. Now, if I turn the magnet upside down, you will see that it is not placed inside the coil and is thrown out. The small cylinder of the magnet is fixed in the core of the coil in the same way. If I cut the current, the magnet will fall. Now I connect the coil to alternating current. This is a 9 volt step down transformer one side of which I connect to the city electricity and I connect the 9 volt side to the coil.
you can see how the small cylindrical magnet moves inside the core. This movement is because the poles of the coil magnet are changed 50 times per second, because the frequency of the coil electricity is 50 Hz, pay attention to the placement of the cylindrical permanent magnet inside the coil. The larger cylindrical magnet is not allowed to move much due to its length and weight. Block magnet shape also does not last because of its long length. The frequency of the coil is very high to better see the movement of the magnet. Now I will put this coiled cylinder aside. And now we go to this coil, which has almost 200 coil turns. And I connect its two ends to the middle zero galvanometer. Now I do the same experiment with two magnets on this coil. This movement is the same movement that is done in most generators that work with a permanent magnet, and you can see that the output voltage is low. Now, based on the previous test we did, I have attached these two block magnets like this on both sides of this iron rod. Their size and strength is like the magnet that was on the plate and it rotates easily by placing the bearing on the iron rod. Now I place it in the center of the coil like this. Now, look at the same two magnets that did not have much power in surface motion, what good power they have. So we conclude that if the magnet is placed in the center of the coil, more electricity will be produced. Now, based on this system, we will make a larger sample with a longer coil to see what voltage it gives us. I use this larger coil that has 500 coil turns. And I use this cylindrical PVC pipe to place the magnet on it. And on it I will put a row of N poles and a row of S poles. Let's go and build it fast.
you can see that with the movement of the hand, AC voltage is produced. Because the bearings are free, it cannot be rotated at a high speed. The important thing is that the magnets must have a small distance from the coil. And I can't reduce this distance in this situation. Now you can see that with the same speed, the voltage is almost 15 volts. So, you have seen that with this method, a better generator can be made to make maximum use of the rotational energy. Of course, you can put these coils on the cylinder and make a special cylinder for the magnet so that the distance between the coil and the magnet is reduced. I hope this video was useful for you. Bye until the next video.